Hello, everyone. Welcome to the flag football pre comp preseason geez, webinar. Sorry. Um, we have two slides real quick. They will be going to you later um, in the web and I'll add them to our webinar. The first one is about the pint size plunge um, this Saturday at Lone Oak Farm Brewery. Um, lots of prizes, lots of fun. Should be a really fun time if you're available. Uh, the second one is uh, talking about the car donation program. Um, information there. Oh, I went back. But information there um, with links. And again, I'll send these out with the slides. So we're going to go ahead and get the webinar started. Uh, for those, I think everyone on here knows me. Uh, my name is Melissa Anger. I am the staff lead for Special Olympics Maryland Flag Football and Senior Sports Director. Um, on the call, we also have Alec Travers. Back again, we didn't scare him off for third year with us as competition director. Um, we also have Jeff Miller, who is our new assistant competition director. Um, if any of you are swimmers, you will recognize him from staging. Uh, we are very excited to have Jeff finally stay in Maryland and able to help us. So we're going to let Jeff say hi. Yes. Well, thank you for that incredible introduction, Ms. Sanger. But yeah, so I'm Jeff. Uh, a lot of you will probably know me from swimming. Uh, swimming is the sport that grabbed me first when I got into Maryland. Uh, Melissa just missed me. So, uh, been doing swimming and, uh, I know nothing about swimming. Uh, but I figured out anyway, um, I played football for four years at Towson university. Um, I played quarterback. If you guys know the name, Tom Flacco, I was his backup. Um, so didn't get to see the field, but got to be behind a cool guy. Um, but I've always been wanting to do football. So I'm glad, uh, Miss Anger and Alec. Um, invited me on to here, so I'm super excited to uh, get to work and actually run a sport that I understand and know pretty well, other than swimming, where the athletes know the sport better than I do. So looking forward to it, looking forward to learning a lot. If you guys have any questions, if I mess up any, anything, if I do anything, please let me know. Um, I'm, I'm looking to just learn and grow and kind of improve, so excited to be here. I mean, first off, I think staying with calling you Miss Anger is the best way to go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, so Jeff is going to be teaching at Howard High and coaching the football team. So we look forward to having him there and working with the Howard football uh, team as well. So very excited to have Jeff um, join the team this year. So it's not just me and Alec. You get a third person with us. All right. So tonight, typical things going over the coach requirements and deadlines, events offered, um, how to qualify for the state tournament, uh, team assessment form, um, and then all the rules and reminders for the season. So um, I'm going to start, and then I get to hand it over to Alec, where he's going to take a little more role in tonight and talk, which is going to be awesome. Um, so first things first, there's absolutely no exemptions to this policy that every athlete and volunteer, coach, anyone that's with the teams, must have all the proper paperwork in at all times. We do this with every single um, sport, every event, everything that we do with Special Olympics Maryland, everyone has to have the proper paperwork or they cannot participate. Same as in the past, but you know, we gotta say it each time. Um, we want you to obviously work with your area leadership. Um, it's very important that you work directly with your area leadership for all paperwork. That's where you'll submit everything to. Um, this is obviously for the health and safety of our athletes, as well as the protection of Special Olympics Maryland and its volunteers. So coaches, start working with your areas now, uh, well in advance of starting of the training season so that you can get um, all the deadlines, everything that is needed for the season um, so that you can make sure you have all the paperwork prior to the beginning of the season. Because until the proper paperwork is in, they're not stepping on the field. Coach, volunteer, or athlete. So I'm letting people into. Um, coaching credentials. Okay, only people that meet all requirements to be a coach will be credentialed as a coach at Special Olympics Maryland, at any Special Olympics event. Not just at practice. Everyone has to have all the requirements to be credentialed as a coach. This includes up-to-date coach certifications, which the date is valid through the state tournament. So 
October 19th is the Fall Fest um, date, which is the Flag Football State Tournament. Um, so all your paperwork has to be in and valid through that time. The standard forms, as well as coaching Special Olympics athletes, or if you're coaching Unified only, the coaching Unified sports will um, take the place of coaching Special Olympics athletes. Coaches must, must have completed the SOMD approved course specific to their sport to be credentialed any higher than the assistant coach. So if you want to be a head coach, you have to have the sport specific plus everything else. Okay, there is this link at the bottom to the coach resource page. On there, there is the statuses, which is updated, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, every Friday. Oh, it says one there, sorry. Update every Friday. Um, Dottie does a great job of making sure that is updated every week, um, as well as links to coaches' trainings and all that fun stuff on the specific pages. Um, coaching requirements. So for a head coach, you need, so for everyone, there is, everyone needs a Class A volunteer application and the background screening protective behaviors, concussion, and the CDW, which is now included as part of the volunteer application. Those four things must be completed to be a sport volunteer. To be considered a coach, you need to add in the coaching Special Olympics athletes or coaching unified sports to those that are only coaching unified uh, teams. And head coaches and above um, need everything above as well as the sport specific. Okay, and then you cannot participate in the program or your team without a head coach. You need to have a head, a certified, fully certified head coach uh, for each team. Um, all the above are valid for three years, which is amazing. Um, you can look on the link prior to get the statuses. It's all up there with all your sports specific trainings as well. So this is just a different um, version of everything I just said. Uh, it just kind of shows what each level needs. Okay. So sport volunteer, assistant coaches, and head coaches are the only ones allowed on the benches uh, with the teams during games. Okay. If you're going to have a coordinator or um, a volunteer help on the bench, you must be, they must be sport volunteer or above. Okay. This is just another pretty way of looking at it. Janet Laramore from Harrow County created this for us a few years ago. Um, and it's literally the last page, just a different way of showing it and the progression for each, um, each level of volunteer. All right, so we have the coach flag football coaches resource page, has all the up-to-date information for competitions, fall fest, sports rules, all that fun stuff. Um, it is updated, I did it this morning. So it has all the high level skills on there, the team assessment form, the individual skills roster form, all that fun stuff. It also has all the competitions and dates um, that we currently have on there as well. Um, the coach resource page is, oh, obviously we have this fly football coach resource page, which is the one I just showed you, as well as the main coach resource page um, listed there that has the sports calendar, instructions for all the certifications, codes of conduct, all that fun stuff. And then each of the sports specific pages have um, pretty much everything that's listed on that page right there. All right, so fall deadlines. So these are for fall fest deadlines. So the training registration deadline, these are the SOMD deadlines. This does not mean that your area leadership might ask for it a week or two earlier. If they ask for it a week or two earlier, you must send it to them when they request it because there is things that they have to do on their end to do prior to the deadline. So we ask for training registration um, to be entered into our system, into game, uh, GMS by October 29th. So you need to give your area leadership time to get, be able to put it in. Um, team rosters are due to me no later than September 10th, okay? Every team, individual team must submit a team roster. If you are a skills coach, then you will fill out the skills form only, the skills roster form only, okay? If you're the team, team assessment, skills, skills roster, that's all we need, okay? Uh, last dates to submit missing paperwork, 
is September 12th. Again, your area leadership might ask for it early. So please, please, please be sure to have it early. Um, I apologize, I didn't change the date on these, but every form must be valid through October 19th, 2024. So I'll make sure I update that before um, uh, before I send this out tomorrow. Sorry about that. Um, and then the competition registration deadline due to SOMD, October 7th, but it's due, again, could be due to your area leadership a week or two before that. So please work with them to ensure that is um, submitted. The only thing that the areas have to do for flag football for this date is to enter the individual skills into their event. I will enter the teams in just as I have in the past. Um, but by this date, all the individual skills must be entered into their event or they will be deleted from the competition and will not be competing. I'm going to pass it over to Alec. We're going to let him kind of take over for a little bit. Thank you so much, Melissa. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Alec. I hope you all remember me from the past years. Um, I'm going to go over some stuff that Melissa already touched on. So if I get to that, I'll kind of breeze through it. And then I have some other stuff that I'll share with you um, about the competition. So the events this year haven't changed. We're still going to do our high level individual skills and we will have traditional and unified teams. So for the state tournament, what you need to do. Uh, you need to meet all of the training and registrations required, and please make sure that you're meeting those deadlines, not only that you have the paperwork, but that you've turned it in. Um, all coaches, as Melissa said, you need to have your certification requirements um, by the specified deadline, uh, slide 11. This goes for head coaches, too. Um, mark this down now on your calendars and your phone, wherever you write stuff down, the required qualifier that everyone has to be at if you plan on participating in fall fest is going to be october 5th which is a saturday and i apologize i changed it on the other page but not this one yeah so it's saturday october 5th um, everyone has to be there if you plan on participating in fall fest and additionally you need to come to at least two other uh sanctioned qualifiers so you don't need to come to everyone. We would like you to come to everyone. It would be great if you could, uh, but you have to come to at least two additional qualifiers besides the required. And so one uh, thing I just want to add real quick, Alec, mm -hmm. it, it says it on here that all teams and players are required to attend this event on October 5th. That is every single player. You're getting this date well in advance. All your players need to be at this qualifier. There is very few exemptions that are allowed for this qualifier. If someone is not there, you must tell us immediately and let us know immediately if they're not if they're not coming. And we'll say if it's um, an excused absence or not. Yep, thank you. All right, I think that's all for this slide. Yeah. Okay, so here are our dates. Um, oh, perfect. You have it in there. Long Reach High School is going to be our spot for the first three uh, qualifiers in September. Once we move into October, it's gonna be at MSD for the required qualifier, and then it'll be in Frederick uh, for the final qualifier after that. So you have five qualifiers to choose from. Hopefully we see you at all five. You have to come to the one uh, on Saturday, October 5th. And just the same way to register, just come to me, email me, say which ones you want to attend. Um, also, just a fun little fact, we were supposed to have the special smiles at softball this past summer games, but as most of you know, it got canceled due to the heat. Um, but I've worked with Kayla Shields, our director of health initiatives, I think her title is. Um, and she's going to work to get the special smiles at the required qualifier in October, which is awesome. And they will make custom mouth guards for any player that wants to come out and get one. Um, that's athlete partners. Anyone that wants a custom mouth guard, they fit it and mold it to their particular mouth, which is pretty cool. Is there yeah, a cost so for if... that? Nope, all free. Excellent. But you still have to wear the mouth guards prior to that event. Correct, correct, correct. Nope, but that will be completely free of charge to anyone that wants one. 
Yes. Like Melissa said, please make sure that everybody has a mouth guard. Everybody did pretty well with that last year, but it's for everyone's safety. We can avoid head injuries, concussions, things like that. If you're not wearing a mouth guard, your player will be pulled. So keep that in mind. Please make sure everybody has a mouth guard. I always have a box of them in my bag. So if anybody is stuck, just send them over to me, Alec or Melissa. I always have some. So as long as I got enough to cover my guys, I'll give them to anybody else. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. And I know a couple yeah, other people also have extras. It's not a bad idea to have extras with you guys, just in case your athlete forgets it or it falls on the ground in the mud. I don't know. Whatever reason, that way they can they can have one at all times. But Bob, we really appreciate it. I know. Megan Schaefer always has a bunch, and I know Cindy always has a bunch in Howard. Um, so we appreciate everyone working together on this, um, but it is a very big requirement. But this is another reason we want to have the special smiles to have custom mouth guards for the athletes so they can each have their own that fits in their mouth. All right, team assessment form. This is the same one that you guys used last time. In the next two slides, it'll have a picture of it and, and more details. But um, basically what this is is for us, it's going to provide a self-rating. You as the coach will give a self-rating of your team's ability. Please try to stick pretty accurately to your team. Don't, you know, underrate or overrate or anything like that. Because we, we look at this and consider this, but we also look at you guys during the qualifiers to see how you're playing and how you match up against other teams. So... We do use this um, when we do our pairings, especially for fall fest, or excuse me, divisionings. Um, so that's pretty much what I said there. Um, we will establish a roster once these are submitted. So please make sure that you have everyone on your team on these team assessment forms. Make sure you include all of your players. Um, these will be shared amongst the coaches and these are due by September 10th. So if you're writing down dates, make sure you have this one. Your team assessment form is due by September 10th. Um, so once we have them, Special Olympics will enter all of them into the computer system um, based off the team assessments. So areas must enter all the athletes that are competing, including individual skills. And this is also where you put all your managers or anything like that. Anyone that's going to be on the bench or the sideline of your game needs to be on the team assessment form with the proper paperwork. If they're not on that form, they will not be kicked off the sideline. All right. So here's the form. This should look familiar to most of you. Um, Melissa, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think anything has changed since last year on this. No, nothing's changed. The only thing I did was the they're going to be a little different order so that it matches the this page because apparently Perfect. Mike Mike pointed out that I accidentally had them differently and that's my fault. So I did correct it and it'll be sent out. But please only send this form. I don't need all the individual summaries. I just need this team summary. So you get Perfect. this. Go for it, Alex. Yep. So Yep, so this is how, what you're going to use to give that scoring on the previous page, which you just saw the team assessment form. You'll use this uh, for actually scoring each of your athletes. So that's where the numbers are going to come from is this page here. That's pretty much all I had for this, unless you have anything else. No, nope. same Perfect. as always. All right. Yep, team rosters, nothing's changed here. Max is 12, and this is including unified and traditional teams. Um, again, the rule book says 10, we say it's 12. So 12 is your max, um, unified teams should be proportionate for teammates and athletes for the game. Your minimum roster size is eight. Um, there are going to be five players on the field for unified teams. It's only two unified teammates and three athletes. So make sure that you keep that in mind. All right, we're going to go through a few rule reminders. Timing, it's going to be two 20-minute halves, running clock until the last minute. Uh, then it'll be stopped at the last minute. Uh, for overtime, so the team that started with the first overtime possession will possess the ball in the second. Excuse me, will possess the ball second 
in the next overtime. And then for scoring, for one extra point, it's six yards away. For two, it's 12 yards away. So now you're out of that no run zone, so you can run or pass. And overtime's only going to be a states. So we're not going to do overtime games or qualifiers. That's only for Fall Fest. There we go. Sorry. All right. Running the ball. So the quarterback, when we consider the quarterback the first player gaining possession of the snap. So the quarterback cannot advance the ball across the line of scrimmage uh, at any point during a down, even if a legal handoff has occurred. That's illegal. Um, ball carriers must make an effort to avoid defenders with an established position. So they can't just be plowing people down. We understand that accidents happen, but they must make an effort to avoid the defender. Um, so we have our no run zones. They have not changed. So any ball snap from on or inside of these zones must be passed. You cannot run. And that's going to be five yards prior to midfield and five yards prior to the end zone. And that goes both ways. Uh, for passing and receiving, if a player steps out of bounds, they may not be the first player to touch the ball. So keep that in mind. If someone goes out of bounds, they cannot be the first person to touch the ball. Uh, screen blocking. So after assuming a legal screen blocking position, a player may move to maintain it unless they move into an opponent and create contact. So they can screen, that's fine, and they can move, but they can't move into an opponent. They can't initiate contact. Uh, our penalties, so the yards may be declined when accepting a penalty. Uh, for offensive pre-snap penalties, they're going to be five yards replay the down. Offensive post-snap, it's going to be five yards loss of down. Defensive pre-snap is going to be five yards and replay the down. Defensive post-snap, five yards automatic first down. And then any unsportsmanlike conducts or 10-yard penalty and loss of down or an automatic first down. So keep that in mind. Make sure everyone has a good attitude. And uh, we don't want to see any unsportsmanlike conduct. Flag guarding. So this was just introduced last year. The ball carrier can now spin, which is great, uh, while running to avoid a defender. Um, jumping or using your arm to avoid your flags being pulled is considered flag guarding. Now, if they're jumping like over top of somebody so they don't step on their face, you know, we understand that. But jumping or using your arms is flag guarding. Um, so be sure when you're doing your uh, practices that you're teaching your athletes to run with their arms up at their chest so that they don't get that flag guarding penalty. Um, and then screen blocking. Again, there's no limit on the number of steps for the blocker. Um, but the blocker must beat the defender to the spot. Think of it like a basketball screen. As long as you're set and there before the defender, then you're fine. Okay, catching. So this is for individual skills. And we've kind of changed it up a little bit from last year based on how we saw everything went. Um, so it's similar, but we changed the roots a little bit, made it a little bit shorter. Um, so hopefully a little bit better for this year. So the first route, there's going to be three. The first one is players start behind the line. When the passer gives the command to go, they're going to run to the first cone, which is two yards out. And then they're going to turn at the next cone and make a post route to the right to receive the pass. The second route is the player is going to stand behind the line, wait for the uh, command to go. And the player is going to run to the second cone, which is five yards out, and then make a diagonal to the left to receive the pass. And then the third route is going to be start at the line, wait for the go. Player is going to run out seven yards straight to receive the pass. So we've shortened it a little bit and made it two yards out, five yards out, seven yards out. Uh, rather than before, I think it was up to 10 or 15 yards. So we we've shortened five, it a little seven bit. And 15. So we made it a little shorter to help the athletes. Yeah, so this is just a visual of what I was talking about. Um, so hopefully this will be a little bit better this year for individual skills. Yeah, we like, you know, 
we hadn't had catching in the past because these high level skills were created during COVID. So we had to be COVID safe with them. And obviously catching was not COVID safe. Um, but now that we're you know past that, we wanted to add in the catching last year. What we did, we thought was going to be great. We then realized it was a little too difficult for some of the skills athletes. Um, so we hope that this will be better. If we need to switch it up next year, then we can and we can discuss it. Um, but these skills, since they're Maryland created, we have a little bit more um, leeway to adjust them if needed. So I'll rely on the skill. We will, as a management team, will rely on the skills coaches um, for your feedback once you're kind of going through these. But this is how it'll be for this season. Thank All you. right. And back over to you. Thank you. All right. So you know, Jeff joins us. And so I'm just going to, you know, throw him into everything at once because that's what we do. So for years, I don't even know how many years, Jeff, we've been talking about doing a quarterback and receiver clinic. Um, wanted to do it in the summers when he was home and off, but then it just never worked out. So we're finally able to do that. We're very excited. We set the date Saturday, August 24th. Um, so this is for athletes. And then we're going to add a coach's portion to it. So Jeff will bring out his uh, some of his players, uh, maybe some former Towson teammates, I think we talked about, and then his um, players from Howard as well come out, put the athletes, whoever, quarterback receivers, even if they're not in those positions and they want to come to the clinic, they're more than welcome. Um, you can see the link that you will send out to your athletes uh, for them to register for the clinic. And then we have the coaches clinic portion where Jeff will kind of walk through the coaches through all the different drills that they're doing um, and all the different aspects to improve your quarterback skills and technique. And I just made that up because I thought it sounded good. So there's the coach's registration. Again, I'll send this out uh, in my follow-up tomorrow. Uh, Jeff, anything you want to add to it? No, no, like you said, we've been wanting to do it for a long time. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to know the athletes, um, kind of seeing where they're at. Um, and if you guys got any questions for me, that'll be, the time to do it and hopefully I can get my high school kids out there and listening to instructions. So that'll be a good goal for them too. And it's even better that I'm not the tallest one anymore. Jeff is taller than I am, which is great. That's why, that's why you had me. That's the... exactly why I had you. So I don't have to be the tallest one out there. Um, I've never felt so short in my life. Alec and Jeff and finally met for the <laughs> first time last week. And we, Jeff and I both stood up at the end and poor Alec. <laughs> <laughs> but we love you anyway Alec um so yeah so this is a great opportunity for athletes and coaches to come out and do you'll get your coaches certification uh, for the sport specific I am also working with Megan Schaefer to do an in-person training out in Frederick again um still working on a date with her so as soon as we get that set it will be in August um but as soon as we get that set I will get that out to you guys as well it's going to be the same registration link as the previous one. Uh, Megan will go through how to run an effective practice from start to finish, demonstrating different drills with her teams um, for all levels of play. For those of you that don't fully know, um, Megan coaches unified teams in Frederick, and she will have, I think, five teams this year, which is crazy, but amazing. Um, so she's building up that program. So she has all different levels of play. Um, from our lowest level to one of our top teams in the state. Um, so if you have any rule questions, she's the person to go to. This is Her trainings are always really great, lots of information um, and stuff like that. So lots of fun stuff there. But as soon as I get that set, and the as soon as I get a time set for the, the previous training on the 24th and then get this time and date set with Megan, I will let you guys know and get that out to you. And that is it. Um, I know we went through this kind of fast. Um, I did have a question pop up. So for the one and the two, going for the extra points, one and two, both of them are in the no run zone. Um, so you can pass or throw in either of them. Those are the out, out of the no run zone. Out, out of, of the no, no run, run zone, zone. not yes. in the no run zone. Yes. 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 Are there any questions? I know we have a lot of returning coaches, which is awesome. Um, looking to possibly, hopefully have a new team, 
um, whether team or skills in PG. So we're really excited about that, working with them. Uh, we have Scott, Assistant Area Director from PG on tonight. So thanks for joining us, Scott. Um, but very excited to have that new program join us again, whether it's just skills this year or team play. We're very excited to keep growing um, the sport of flag football. I think we're going to break 20 teams this year, which is really cool because we've never had that many in football. So really excited, really great season. I'm so excited to start the season up. This is always one of my favorite seasons outside of basketball, as you guys know. It's my one of my favorites. So um, I just wanted to take the time to say thank you all to the coaches. Uh, without you guys, we couldn't have these sports. Um, you guys are on the ground level with the athletes, improving their skills, working with them. Um, if there's ever any questions, please, you know, never he hesitate to ask. Um, but I also want to thank Alec and Jeff for <laughs> working with me. Jeff is getting used to all my texts and emails that uh, he's never had to deal with before. Um, so without Jeff and Alec, I mean, they've been lifesavers to me running flag football. Alec, like I said, this is his third year um, with us. So it's getting better each year. Um, giving him more responsibility, which is always fun. Um, then bringing in Jeff, I think they're going to work extremely well together. So it's going to be a great team for flag football. Um, the rest of these slides, so I have the card donation program. I'm going to put the pint size plunge in there as well. But again, just go through these extra resources <clears throat> at the end. Um, links and different things, what everything means, coaching certification, codes of conduct. Um, take time to go through these because I'm not going to take your time tonight to do it. So when I send this out tomorrow, just make sure you uh, go through this and double check, it has pictures of all the medical forms and everything that's required. Um, Real so quick, yeah, can so, I uh, jump in? Yeah. For the medical forms, you guys did great last year. Please make sure they're updated and you have one for each player ready to go, just in case. Luckily we didn't need them last year. The year before was a different story. Um, so they really helped me a lot. In case something does happen, I can get all the information that I need very quickly. Um, so please make sure that not only you have them, but that they're up to date and new and not 10 years old because things have changed. So please make sure that you have those and have them up to date. Nice little plug from our, one of our uh, medical team, medical committee volunteers. Because as you know, Alec is not our medical person at flag football events. The... Uh, Post County has to provide one, but you know, it's always great to have that extra set of hands with Alec um, there as well. So as he said, make sure everything's up to date and make sure you have your medical forms with you at all times. That's a huge thing that is always required of coaches. So again, you know, volunteer application, incident reports, any kind of incident, whether it's injury or damage or whatever, make sure you fill it out. And that is it. Oh, my thank you went away. So that is all I got. Um, there's no questions in the chat. Uh, like I said, I know we went through this kind of fast. I will send out the recording and the slides tomorrow. Um, so if you have any questions, please don't ever hesitate to ask. Um, just a heads up, I will be out of the office starting Saturday for two weeks. So please don't call me or anything during that time. If you do, I will call you back when I get back to the office on the 4th. Nope, the 5th. That's a Monday. Um, but if you have questions, you can email me and I'll get back to you when I return to the office or you can reach out to Steve, which I'll put up an out of office for that. Um, but starting on Saturday, I'll be out for two weeks um, and I would not be responding to emails. So, um, but just a little heads up there. But other than that, have a good night. I know we went through this kind of fast. Uh, reach out with any questions, and I look forward to a great season. Thanks. Have a good night, guys. Thanks, everybody. It's not too bad, right, Jeff? <laughs> no, not bad at all. It was awesome. Melissa, I have an off-the-board question. Of course you do, Kathy. Of course. Hip hop. Where do I find the rules for it? Are you really <laughs> talking about cheerleading right now? Yes, I am. Because I've got somebody asking us to start a hip hop. I think you should. 
But I know. We have to, oh, hold on. Oops. 